Dangus Log, coming to you from the Enigma Expedition. By the time this transmission reaches the bubble, I'll have made it to Colonia and completed this incredible expedition. And by the time you see this, Mr. Dove Enigma will have been one of the first people in the history of mankind to ever space talk with himself while 600 people are watching. Now, I had no doubt this last leg of the journey would be the most uneventful part. I had spent a week parked at the halfway point awaiting a meeting with a low-level courier for an organization called the Dark Veal. As a mystery investigation person, it's my duty to shine a light on the shadowy organizations of this galaxy, and the Enigma Expedition offered me a perfect cover story for me to leave the bubble without arousing suspicion. But I was on my own now, and most of the expedition was far ahead of me. I left my rendezvous point in the Eagle Nebula, now carrying a suspicious package in my cargo bay. But in my heart, I carried the hopes and dreams of the bubble. And by that, I don't mean the part of humanity that gets hard while shooting torpedoes at wedding barges. I mean the part that makes you want to be like one of the Star Trek peoples. You know, like back when humanity was all about getting into fistfights with aliens and, you know, sexing up every woman you come in contact with. But anyway, I reflected on the first leg of the journey. A relaxed sightseeing tour through the cosmos, jumping with pals at the prettiest of locations. Every day was a cornucopia of camaraderie, filled with discoveries that would chisel through the cracks of any hardened explorer's heart. I myself was able to tag several Earth-like and water worlds, forever embellishing my name onto planets that one day may be seen by some distant traveler who will get pissed off that I didn't scan the moons and vow his revenge. But for the next bit of this journey, I was going to take a ride on the Neutron Highway to speed myself along and be able to catch up with the others. Of course, there's, um, well, only one little problem with that. Excuse me? Hello? Hey, you there? Um, I don't know where you think you're going. You have to pay the toll. You can't choose a Neutron Highway without paying the toll. Ex excuse me, sir, are, are you listening to me? You gotta be kidding me. I hate these talking planets. Yes, yes, well, hate all you want, but this rock has over seven billion years toll collecting experience, so you have to pay the toll if you want to use the Neutron Highway. If you would kindly transfer over 500 credits, you can be on your way and I shall not bother you again. How about I transfer a load of bio waste into your craters instead? Hey, you can't talk to me like that. I've got up with a lot of crap collecting tolls out here, and I've had enough of your attitude. You think toll collecting is easy? How many planets do you see trying to make a living and contribute to galactic society? How many anyway, tolls have you tried to collect? Here, so I'm gonna go. Hey, hey, get back here! You didn't pay the toll. Get, you, you didn't pay. You can't. That dumb ball of rock can't keep me from the highway to the danger zone. Time for some exploration, rock. Engage the montage. After a long, hard journey of two seasons of Star Trek, I had grown myself an explorer's beard in honor of Commander Riker, and I found myself caught up with the others just in time for a scheduled rendezvous. Now, explorers spend a lot of time alone in witch space, by nature of the mechanics of space travel, you see, and that means people start to get a little wound up when they've been at it for a while. That's why the occasional meetup is a great way to blow off some of that steam. Of course, there had been another reason to go red-hot at this point. 
I learned through the grapevine that a group of mentally unsound street artists had spray-painted the Dove Enigma an aqua seafoam green, making it trendy and attracting hipsters. But thankfully, a group of commanders had also rallied to bring meta-alloy paint from the bubble and wash off that graffiti, saving everyone from having to be mildly irritated. So it was cause for a celebration among the members of this expedition. And tonight, it was going to be a fireworks show like no other. The celebration of the journey we all decided to undertake. To go from the bubble to Colonia for the Dove. We were sharing a moment, united in purpose, living on the edge of a cliff. Oh my, these are some bootleg fireworks. Uh, throw some water on it. Well, this went on for some time. Ship upon ship, releasing their happy sparkles in every direction. Happy to enjoy the company of the other pilots. The sky was certainly different out here, but I know I wasn't feeling homesick for the bubble, and there were still many more jumps to Colonia. The journey had just begun. Now, I had made the trek to Sagittarius once before, long ago when I got my ASP Jerry with a 3A fuel scoop and an unengineered jump drive. You see, back then there was no Colonia, or Neutron Highway, or even planets to land on and camp for a while. On top of that, I went alone. And after that ordeal, I had gone planet side for months, vowing to never fly again. But then I got into the whole intergalactic mystery business and found my wings again. Now that I was caught up with this expedition, I had some time to practice what I call piggyback mountaineering. Observe. Ready for mindless jump? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Mindless jumping. Engaging pants pooping protocols. Yeah, I'm actually only two jumps away from where Spatula is at now. Almost there. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. Uh, what's okay. that? You're inside the guy. No, he's getting a ride on an adder. Oh, he's on an MP. Oh, the oh, station, the station's shooting at you, but it can't get you. <laughs> oh my god. You, <laughs> let's see what happens. This is, this is worth watching. This, this is working. Oh, this is working. he's going in. Oh my god. Stay there. Stay there. He's probably. Oh yeah, he's oh taking off. Ah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're all shooting at me. Oh my god. Oh. Ah! Okay. We're gonna make it to this building. <laughs> We're gonna do this. We can do this. All right, just line it up. Line it up. Okay, that's good. Ah, no, 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 not good, not good, not good. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. At the end of the journey, it is time to reflect on all the places along the way. While the end goal may have been the purpose for this expedition, it is the path that will forever decide the shape of the memories that I take with me. I remember the death spiral, a place where gas giants no longer understand the concept of personal space, and one orbits within the exclusion zone of its neutron star. And before that, I remember the crux, a menage a trois of cosmic tendrils that form the shape of Voldemort's whole crux, which is why they call it the crux. Legend has it that Salame's murderer was born here, between these very stars, which trapped the dark sorcerer in another dimension. And I remember the Guardian Ruins in the Scout Eye region, where remnants of an ancient dead alien race mock us with their puzzles. The Guardians clearly had advanced technology, but not advanced enough to save themselves, which is pretty bad considering that a bunch of hairless monkeys and giant bugs figured that shit out. So were the Guardians really that advanced? Well, I guess invisible hills are pretty cool. We don't seem to have much in the way of invisibility products available in 3304, so, well, that's pretty neat. And of course, I remember my detour to the Collection of Wonders. Ascorbius had told me about this place, but called it Cosmic Horror for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I think Space Madness had bitten off quite a bit of his brain by that point in the journey. But the sight of a ringed neutron star will still do wonders for curing insanity. I'm not crazy. 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 Um. <clears throat> And I remember which much spookiness, that abandoned base in the conflicts, a chilling reminder of humanity's unsuccessful attempts to create a Plan B in case of Thargoid invasion. Unfortunately, no one except the most hipster of hipsters wanted to live in the middle of nowhere in a bubble dome, so the project eventually failed, leaving the sites as monuments to humanity's failure. And of course, I remember the Glowbug Giant, a large gas giant with brilliant green stripes that add a nice splash of color to the universe. It was while hovering over those rings that I suddenly felt the urge to get out there and supercruise and do a little ring surfing. The 
gravity waves are perfect and you can just ride that bogey into the radical distance, dude. Totes recommend coming here. But what I'll remember most was the hottest, brightest gas giant I had ever encountered in the Kalalal Buffet F-22 system. The temperature of this gas giant is over 9,000 Kelvin, meaning you could cook an egg on your ship hull from the distance of Hutton Orbital. Looking into the light, it was like looking into the eye of the Braben himself. Actually, I, I, I can't really see anything but white. Good God. Oh, God, I'm, I'm, I'm blind. It's just like Jordy LaForge. Oh, but, but I don't have any of those blind people visors. What am I going to do? Uh, Nova, Nova, I need you to steer for a bit. Engage autopilot. Yes, Captain Spatula. I've stared into a million suns with my own two eyes, but never have I seen any light this bright coming from a gas giant. This is truly a marvel of the universe. A must-see for any travelers packing a load of sunscreen and glasses and brave enough to break out of the bubble. Uh, Nova, wait, wait, my sight's coming back. What's our trajectory? Ah! Holding pattern X-ray. I was reborn once again inside of that light, I think. It's like it stripped all of the darkness from my soul, photon by photon, until there was nothing left but good intentions. Suddenly all my thoughts had become wholesome and pure. I think this magical light turned me into a better person. Well, what better time to make my way to Colonia? Nova, plot a route for Colonia. I would advise against that course of action. Oh, that's it, you piece of shit. I've had it with your attitude. That's it. I'm disconnecting your vocal circuits, you son of a bitch. I'm, I'm getting my toolkit. Okay. Okay, I have my tools now. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cut you up with this chainsaw. Ah! Oh, wait. I think that's the docking computer. Nova! Fine. I won't disturb you again. That's right. But in any case, I arrived at Colonia, to the Dove Enigma, at long last. This is it. The end of the rainbow. The pot of gold. The finish line. Though I'm not sure what the finish have to do with this, and who put them in charge of where the lines are drawn? Either way, here I was at the end of the road, and there it was, in front of me. The Dove Enigma Megaship in all of its glory. A monument for Commander Dove Enigma 13 struggles, and a beacon of science to the denizens of the second bubble. And within moments, he would arrive here to complete this expedition, greeted by an honor guard in a private instance, and escorted in for the final distance, while the rest of the fleet gathered on fleet calm. I gave the megaship a firm boop to christen the arrival and test the Dove Enigma's hull integrity. With only minutes left to go, emotion suddenly ran high. After this moment, we'd have accomplished something. Raising money for charity, bringing Dove to his megaship, and marking this time on the annals of history. The air in my cockpit felt heavy and charged with static, probably because I damaged my docking computer with a chainsaw, but also probably because we were living history. Before long, there were many commanders here, gathering on the hull of the megaship and awaiting the big show. Commander Greatest had organized, and Commander Plater was streaming the arrival live. Those in our instance turned in to watch the spectacle. For once in this universe, a group of commanders were united in perfect peace and harmony! Uh, Oxy, did you really want to park right in front of me? Oh, sure, no. why not? Well, almost. But I nestled in and turned on my gal tube to watch the spectacle unfold. Dove's arrival was incredible, with a coordinated laser and flak cannon show. Now, let's have a moment for silence for the Dove. Watch. And with that, the Enigma expedition was over. Of course, after all that, we went out to the land of giant crystals to have a good post-expedition romp, surrounded by a large cluster of active geysers, spewing their streams into the air. We all gave our ships a good wash that day in that geyser juice. Looking back, all the sights I saw and the friends made along the way, I thought, was this really the end of the journey, or just another marker on the big journey called the Grind of Life? One thing's for sure, 
It was one hell of a trek to get out here, but it was worth every minute of time. Now that it was over, it was time to blaze our own trails again. While most of the travelers here would soon head back to the bubble, for me, this mystery was just beginning. After a brief rest in Colonia, I needed to take a mysterious package from the Dark Wheel out quite a bit further. To the core of the Milky Way, in fact, and Sagittarius A, the infamous black hole which haunts the center of our galaxy. But that will be a story for another Dangus. And so ends the Enigma Expedition. Tune in for my next log. This is Commander Spatula. Dangusing out. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I, I'm so depressed right now. I don't know what to do, what to say. Please come back! Pay the toll! I think he's gone. Oh, I'll just sit here then, all on my own. Bye, everyone. <laughs>